For the purposes of this presentation, we've chosen to use ultralight aircraft. Remember that uncontrolled airports, particularly those using ATF or aerodrome traffic frequency, have a wide variety of aircraft categories operating within the area. Ultralights, gliders, helicopters, balloons and airplanes make this a very exciting and diverse environment. Remember that the procedures we describe here are valid for all aircraft operating in an uncontrolled airport environment. Also remember the regulations regarding right-of-way. Power-driven aircraft shall give way to airships, gliders and balloons. An airship must give way to gliders and balloons. Gliders must give way to balloons. And a power-driven aircraft shall give way to an aircraft that's towing a glider or any other object or carrying a slung load. The primary difference between mandatory frequency and aerodrome traffic frequency airports or ATF is that you're not required to have a radio to use an ATF airport. However, if your aircraft is radio equipped, you must use the following procedures. Find the correct frequency in your Canadian flight supplement or on your VNC VTA charts. The ATF will usually be the airport's Unicom frequency, where one exists, or 123.2 if no Unicom is present. At aerodromes using an ATF procedure, the concept of see and be seen, hear and be heard is even more important. Remember that there's no assigned ATC unit which is obliged to provide traffic or conflict information. You need to broadcast your intentions clearly and it will be between you and other traffic in the area to cooperate and coordinate in order to avoid loss of separation. Procedures in ATF areas are similar to those in MF areas, although somewhat more restricted. The primary difference is that the entry to the ATF's airport circuit is limited to either an overhead the field approach or a straight in on downwind approach. If you're approaching the aerodrome perpendicular to the runway from the downwind side, it may be necessary to cross overhead the runway in order to reach the upwind side before commencing a descent to circuit altitude. This crossing, if required, should be accomplished at 500 feet above circuit altitude. Once the crossover is complete, you can descend to circuit altitude on the upwind side, as per the regulations, and perform a 180 degree turn to recross the runway at circuit altitude, and then join the downwind for the pattern and approach. So your required reporting points will be initial contact at least five minutes before entering the outer limits of the ATF area. Usually, but not always, five nautical miles. Follow the Unicom, Challenger Ultralight Charlie Sierra Golf, 10 west, 3000, ETA eight minutes, uh, inbound for landing, requesting airport advisory. If the Unicom is in operation, you'll receive a response from the ground such as Charlie Sierra Golf, this is Baldwin Unicom. Runway 19 currently in use, the winds are light and variable, and the altimeter setting is 29.32. To which you would answer... Uh, Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, straight in, left hand downwind, 19, Baldwin. A check of the CFS shows that Baldwin is registered for skydiving operations, and if they're underway, it would probably rule out an overhead approach leaving straight in on downwind as your only alternative. If you do decide to join overhead the field, make direct contact with the jump plane to coordinate your circuit entry and ensure that you don't create a hazard to descending skydivers. As you enter the ATF area, continue listening in on the Unicom frequency. Then, as you join the aerodrome circuit, report in, giving your position. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, joining straight in, left hand downwind, 19 Baldwin. As you enter the circuit, be even more vigilant about possible conflicting traffic than at a mandatory frequency aerodrome. Especially at mid-downwind, the only other position in the circuit where inbound aircraft should be joining. On downwind at any aerodrome, you'll do your pre-landing checks, confirm you're satisfied with the runway in use, and then make your turn onto base. After a careful look around for potentially conflicting traffic, make your turn onto final, then once established, make your next position report. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, established uh, final 19 Baldwin. As you descend towards the runway, remember expect the unexpected. Be prepared for the preceding aircraft that could land long and delay clearing the runway. An aircraft or ground vehicle that could enter the runway environment without a clearance. Or wildlife that unexpectedly enter the runway. Then, after you land and have cleared the active landing area, make your final report. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, clear 1-9, Baldwin. 